And now, enter the courtroom of Judge Mathis. Plaintiff Arnett Watson says she's a college recruiter who enjoys acting on the side. Arnett agreed to be in the defendant's play because she's a domestic violence survivor, and the production dealt with that topic. However, she's suing today for breach of contract, stolen property, and emotional distress. Defendant Ken Yarda McCarter says she too is a victim of domestic violence, and she wrote this play while she was living in a shelter with her three daughters. Ken Yarda says Arnett was such a diva that another actor quit as a result of her behavior, and she's countersuing for defamation. Start with you. Okay, um, I'm Arnett Watson from Houston, Texas. I'm a recruiter at a historically black college and university. Um, I am also an actor. Uh, like you, you're a judge, and I've seen you in Tyler Perry's movies. I also saw you on Let's Stay Together. But I'm not acting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on there as Judge Mathis. Oh, okay. Well, I Go do want to add Talking that... my stuff like I talk in here. <laughs> you do want to add what? I do want to add that you are just as handsome in person as you are on TV. Thank you. Thank you. And I see them new glasses. <laughs> <laughs> Got them just for you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Okay, on September 25th, 2011, uh, Kenya um, sent me an inbox via Facebook asking me to be a part of her production, A Woman's Worth. Uh, I agreed to do the show because Kenya and I both had similar backgrounds. I'm a survivor of domestic violence, and her play was about domestic violence. Yeah. Um, I had one time lived in a shelter in Houston, mm. and while I was living in the shelter, I was earning my master's degree. After I earned it, mm. I went on to be an adjunct speech professor at two colleges there, and I had my students do two service projects to earn $4,000 worth of Christmas toys for the children. Great. And she told me that the reason why she had written this play is because she was also a survivor of domestic mm -hmm. violence and that she wanted to do this as a platform for domestic violence. So even though it was a small amount of money, uh, $175, because of the platform, mm -hmm. I decided to go ahead and do it for her. And you all have a similar background as Tyler Perry. He began writing plays during mm -hmm. his homeless time and living in his car mm -hmm. and boom, then he went into the uh, acting in a play and writing the play and now it's all history. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. glad to hear about you overcoming those obstacles. The same thing for you. Thank you. Thank you. So tell me uh, what happened. Okay, um, on October 1st, she told me we would sign the contract for the $175. She said that I would be paid seven to 10 business days after the show you know, went up. She told me that the show would be for three days, October 29th, 28th, 29th, and 30th, which it only really went up for the 29th. Um, she also told me that if she did not pay me, it states in the contract right here, I have a copy if you need it, that she, would, have, um, she would pay all legal fees, court costs, attorney's fees, and mitigated damages if the contract was breached by her. So I went ahead and signed it, okay. and I announced on Facebook that I was doing a new show at the Hobby Center. You know, I'll give you guys more details. Come out and see it. Immediately, my inbox was flourished. No, girl. Uh-uh. Don't right. do that play. Well, let me take my uh, Tyler Perry inference back. <laughs> Tyler Perry pays his actors. <laughs> let me hear from her, and then you can okay. give me the rest. OK. okay. Ma'am? Yes, Your Honor, I'd just like to give you a little bit of uh, the background of the situation. Like she said, we were uh, both victims of domestic violence. Um, I found myself in a situation where mine was more emotional, and I'm a mother of three girls. So I prayed and I asked God to make a way for me to get out of this situation and I would leave. And I found myself on a Greyhound bus going into a women's shelter. While there, I became friends with a lot of the women there and that inspired me to write the play. Yeah. Um, I'm also a student at Houston Community College. My original actors that came on were all students that were just out of school, that were looking for experience, and I had a couple of people quit at the last moment. That's when I brought in Miss Arnett and four other actors that I had to pay because that's the way that they, they've been acting for a while. Um, I was told by a mutual friend that Miss Arnett was 
an amazing actress. And so I spoke with her, she and I, we exchanged stories, and I was just inspired all the more to know that she had come from this particular background. Um, the second rehearsal she showed up, and like the diva in her just kind of came out. There was an actress that wound up quitting the project because Miss <sighs> Arnett discouraged her. She was like, honey, I don't know who told you you can act, but you need to go down to that acting school. You need to tell them people get your money back because <laughs> you don't belong in front of the camera, baby. You might need to work backstage somewhere. I don't know who to lie to this child. And I'm like, okay. Did you tell a woman that? No. Okay. All right. Go ahead. <laughs> I might be a little diva-ish, though. I might be a little diva-ish, but the rest of that, no. Go ahead. And the lady wound up resigning from the project, and I had to find another actor to fill that role that she wound up quitting on. Let me hear from her, and then we'll get to the rest of your story. Um, after... How are you suing her for a breach and uh, stolen property? Okay, after um, Miss Kenya told me that where the rehearsals were and I GPSed it, um, the neighborhood, I thought my GPS had taken me to the wrong place because this was a crack infested raggedy neighborhood with guys with no shirts on riding three speed bicycles with beer cans. I was frightened out of my mind. <laughs> I'm not accustomed to working in that type of atmosphere. Please, you from Houston? I'm, I'm originally from. <laughs> what I'm you're originally not from Tampa, to? Florida. West um, Tampa, that's a tough part of town. <laughs> that's where you from? I am from West, West Tampa. West Tampa, yes. yeah, don't come in here getting cute. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Okay, so when mm. I got to the rehearsals and I realized everything was dilapidated, she also told me that it, she would provide wardrobe and hair, and she had this lady come up three or four days. But she did not have wardrobe and hair. So she started pressuring me, can you bring your clothes so I can see them? Why? You said you're going to have wardrobe and hair. So if I am going to provide my own clothes, you better trust what I'm bringing, because I'm not bringing my clothes out of my car to this raggedy neighborhood. This is the attitude she had? Yes, sir. I'm not accustomed to working in that type of atmosphere. Please, you from Houston? I'm, I'm originally from... <laughs> I'm originally from Tampa, Florida. West um, Tampa, that's a tough part of town. <laughs> that's where you from? I am from West, West Tampa. West Tampa, yes. yeah, don't come in here getting cute. Plaintiff Arnett Watson agreed to be in the defendant's play, and the defendant claims Arnett was such a diva that one of the other actors quit. Go ahead. Okay, so I went ahead and I did the play for Kenya, which I got a standing ovation. I played a part of Mother Caroline and everyone hated me. The only question is how many people stood? <laughs> <laughs> Did everybody or just your family? Everybody. I claimed standing ovations too. It was nobody but my family. <laughs> Everybody, all right. Everybody did. I, I did. And after the play, I ended up leaving my battery charger, my Blackberry battery charger, my Blackberry um, battery in the dressing room. So I text Kenya and I said, did you find the gray battery charger that was plugged in the wall in the ladies' dressing room? She texts me back, yes, I did. I will bring it to you when I bring you your check. I'll bring everything to you. You have that? Yes, I do. All right. Okay, and what has happened since then? And then she invited me to the post-production meeting at Jack's Grill. I told her I have a breast cancer run that morning. She said, well, just come afterwards. So here I am all sweaty with a breast cancer attire on, and I sit in this Jack's Grill for two hours. When the meeting is over, I said, Kenya, can you give me my BlackBerry battery charger, my BlackBerry battery, and my check for $175? And she said, I forgot to bring it. Yeah. This was the whole point for me coming out here. Okay, after that, <laughs> we texted several times. Yes, I'm gonna meet you. Yes, I'm gonna pay you. Girl, I'm gonna do this. All the way up into November the, excuse me, uh, November the 30th. After that, Kenya changed her phone number. I have right here a Facebook inbox on December the 8th where she said, sorry for the delay, Mrs. Arnett. A lot of things got behind while I was out of town. I will be sending it to you on Tuesday, and I will do right by you because you have honored my production with your gift and service. Thanks again on December the 8th. Yeah, you're a fabulous you actress. Let me see. <laughs> Great reading. Yeah. Ma'am? Um, as she stated, it was a post-production meeting scheduled for the cast to come out on November the 5th. 
At the time, I only had temporary checks, which I have right here, and those that were on time were able to get their checks that particular day. She asked for the battery charger. I said, well, I left the box because all of the actors left things behind. It's stated in the contract that you're not supposed to be leaving things behind and that I would not be responsible for them. But out of the kindness of my heart, I put everything together and brought it in a box so that everybody can go in the box and get what they left. That particular you can hand it to me if you that like, particular please. day, I didn't have the box with me. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I took that box that had those, um, the, the stuff that the actors left behind, I took it back to the theater and I took it to the lost and found because it was not my responsibility to begin with. On December 8th, you say to her, sorry for the delay. Mm -hmm. A lot of things got behind while I was out of town. I will be sending it, I will be sending it to you on Tuesday. Is that December the 8th? Yes, ma'am. Yes. The reason that, I, and I, I told her on December the 8th that I would send it to her on that Tuesday, which will be, um, I forgot the exact 20 date. Tuesdays ago? No, sir. It was on, on that. 40 Tuesdays ago? No, sir. <laughs> Let's get to your counterclaim. Okay. 1500, how does she defame you? She defamed my character because on, when I inboxed her on December the 8th and told her that I would be taking care of the payment, on that following Tuesday, mm -hmm. two days later, which was December the 10th, she made this posting on Facebook. Mm -hmm. What does it say? It says, I am sick and tired of hypocritical people posting all these godly messages for their Facebook statuses when they know they owe me money for the last performance I did for them <laughs> at the Hobby Center. I'm about to start naming names. Pay me before this gets ugly. And so then all of the people were making their comments, and then she goes on to say, um... You guys got me cracking up, but someone needs to tell Kenya Nicole McCarter uh, so she can know all of this. Know all of what? What did she do then to defame you? She went on my company page and she started making postings saying um, that I was robbing her kids of a Merry Christmas by never. not giving her the money. Never. I have never done and, that. Um, that so um, untrue. She said that, no, um, if you are an actress, do not go to try to go work for a woman's worth production. They're not about their business. Show me that. I don't, ha I don't actually have that. Okay. It's actually in the contract that states you're not supposed to go on Facebook or any other social media website speaking of anything that takes place with the production. Due to privacy laws, and privacy laws are not going to prohibit someone from asking for their money or commenting about they weren't paid for a production. Maybe you didn't pay this woman. Plain and simple. You gave excuses all the way up to December 8th. Uh, I'm going to grant your judgment $510. You have no defense to not paying this woman her money. Your counterclaim for $1,500, I'm going to deny. She didn't say anything false about you not paying her money. Judgment for the plaintiff. Have Thank a good you. day. Um, I have nothing against you, uh, Nicole. I wish you a lot of luck. I'm happy that you, we both are survivors, and I just needed to be paid for my acting abilities. And I hope that, you know, we can be friends because we're both women that encourage other women. And the only thing I have to say is that, you know, I just want to make the matter right. You know, a lot of things took place that should not have taken place, and I will not lie. I. Um, I was not the best businesswoman at the beginning of this, but I learned a very valuable lesson and I'm gonna make it correct. Good.